Yeah. Welcome to B&B RV. Today we'll be showing you our 2022 Thor Chateau 27R, our 29 foot Class C with one slide. First, we're gonna start by showing you the outside of the coach here, and then we'll jump onto the inside. The first compartment here we have is your generator. The generator is gonna be for anything 110 inside the coach if you are not plugged into shore power. That includes your air conditioner, microwave, TVs, DVD player, anything you're plugging into the 110 outlets. If you are running the generator, just be aware this is the exhaust. Can get a little warm, and um, I'd keep those windows closed uh, for safety reasons there. Uh, next compartment here we have is a, a small storage compartment. Next we have an outdoor shower, has hot and cold uh, water feature there with a, with a handheld shower. Uh, next compartment we have here is another larger storage compartment. Quite a bit of storage on this side here, another storage compartment there. Uh, next, we have your cable hookup and electrical hookup. Um, those items will be found in one of these storage compartments here. Um, this big black cable here will be for your shore power if you have that available at your campsite. You're just gonna pop this open here. This end of the cable is going to attach to the coach, uh, screws in, secures with that ring there, and the other end will plug into your 30 amp connection. Uh, we also provide an adapter for you that goes on the end of there if you're plugging into regular 110. And then this is just a continuation of that other uh, storage compartment up there where we have your camp chairs, leveling blocks, and that sort of thing. Two options for the water. Uh, you do have an onboard tank, a uh, 40 gallon tank there to fill that guy up. You're just going to unscrew the cap here, uh, throw that water hose in there, and that is gravity fill. So once it's full, it'll just start pouring out that little screen there. And then if you have a city water connection at your campsite, this is that direct connection there. Uh, you'll just hold that hose up to it, screw it down. Uh, once that's turned on, everything as far as the water uh, will work for you on the inside. Down here, uh, we have the area where you dump your holding tanks. Uh, your black is for the toilet water and the gray is for your sink and your shower. You're just gonna pop this little rubber square off of there. Pull this hose out of here give this cap a little twist to the left that pops right off of there and then this guy attaches just the same way so just a little twist to the right the other end is going to go into your dump station you want to pull this black lever first so you just grab it and pull it straight out let that toilet water drain and then close that back up then you'll pull the gray one second pull that straight out let that soapy sink and shower water rinse that hose out you'll close that back up take the hose off put the cap back on and then you'll find some chemical packs in the bathroom under the sink. You'll want to flush one of those down the toilet with some water. Those will help keep everything fresh in the bathroom for you. Around back here, we have your backup camera. Uh, the ladder is really just for maintenance, not really a patio or anything up there. So just stay off of that guy. Around here on the passenger side, first little compartment we have is for an external propane hookup. So if you have a quick connect hose, want to hook up your personal grill there, you can use the RV propane for that. Next compartment we have right here is just a storage compartment. Moving down, we have a couple of 110 plugs. So generator, shore power, you can plug a radio or something like that in there. These are just vents. And then your propane tank is down here below. Um, when using this, you're just going to want to make sure this knob is turned all the way to the left uh, to ensure anything propane is going to be functional inside the RV. If you need to get this refilled, you'll take it to a designated refill location. Another storage compartment right here. And then this coach also is equipped with turn signal cameras. So as you are making those turns, changing lanes, just flip that on. It'll display what's over in the uh, blind spots in those cameras there. Then we'll be uh, jumping on the inside and showing you around. Right inside the doorway here, you have a switch for the awning. Push it down and the awning will start to go out. The other way your awning will come back in. Just make sure you don't use that awning in inclement weather. 
Two switches here are for lights on the exterior. And then down below, we have the stabilizers. These are not leveling jacks. They're not made to level your vehicle on uneven terrain, just to stabilize for the wind and walking around in the vehicle. So do not use them for the purpose of leveling. They're just to stabilize. So to put the jacks down, make sure the ground is clear and then start pushing the down button and hold it down. The other buttons by the door, this is your battery power. So you wanna leave this in the on position for your entire trip. Don't toggle it back and forth. This will make sure that all your battery items are running for the entire time. The first light switch here is the ceiling light. So it turns on all the lights upon entry into the vehicle. And then the step light is gonna be the step here. And there's another step over to the side there. It adds a little light to show you that there's steps there. This is a solar controller. This vehicle is equipped with solar panels. That will help keep those batteries nice and charged when you're out in the sun. It is not meant to charge the batteries if they're dead. So make sure you keep an eye on your voltage level here. That 12.7 is how many volts you have. You wanna keep that in the 12s, 11s okay. Anything lower than that, you're getting pretty low and need to charge those batteries. You can charge your batteries by running the generator driving the vehicle or plugging the vehicle into shore power. This vehicle is equipped with a full wall slide. The slide is on the driver's side of the vehicle. So when you park at your campsite, you need to make sure you have a couple feet of clearance for that wall to expand. When you come inside the vehicle, right inside the entry door is your main control panel. And on there is the button to extend and retract the slide. So you hold down the button until the slide is fully extended. This particular model, you have to have the engine on and the emergency brake engaged for the slide to work. We do have vehicles in this model where the opposite is true. The keys have to be out of the ignition for the slide to work. When you come in to pick up your unit, we'll be sure to go over this with you so you know exactly which model you've been given. The other controls on your main control panel, you have the generator start and stop. Again, the generator is used to power all of the 110 on the motorhome. So that includes the air conditioner, microwave, TV, any of the outlets when you're not plugged into shore power. Generator runs off the same gas tank as the engine and it will shut down if you get to a quarter of a tank or less. To start the generator, you just hold it down on start until it kicks over and then you can let go and it's running. It's got the red light that shows you. And this is the meter that shows you how much time you've used on the generator. Your rental includes three free hours a night. Anything over that, you pay $3 an hour. All of the buttons up here are used to check your gauge levels on your different components. So LPG is the propane level. When you push the button, the red lights come on to show you that that tank is full. The battery reads LFGC low fare good in charging it still thinks we're charging from that trickle over from the generator the fresh tank is full of water the black tank again is your toilet that one's empty right now and the gray is the sink and shower that one is also empty down here we have the water pump you need to use the water pump to have water pressure when you're not hooked into city water at the campsite so you flip on the pump and then you can use the toilet sink shower. When you're done, turn that back off because it does run on battery. You have two options on the water heater. We recommend using the LP gas, which is the propane. To flip that on, you just turn it to on and it takes about 20 minutes to get a hot tank. It's a six gallon water tank. And so 20 minutes or so and you'll have hot water to use. So flip that on when you're ready to use that. In the cab area, you first will want to adjust your mirrors. It's an electronic mirror control that's on the left side of the driver up on the door panel. That'll adjust your main mirror and then the bottom mirrors, the blind side mirrors can be adjusted just using your finger to push them. This vehicle does have an emergency start function. The engine battery is separate from the house batteries. So if you do end up where your engine battery is low, you can still start the vehicle. You push the emergency start button and hold it and then turn the vehicle on and that'll start you from using the house batteries instead. 
All of the other controls in the dash area are very similar to your vehicle. There is a feature called tow haul. You can use that, especially here in our beautiful state of Colorado in the mountains. It'll help you, the transmission will shift up and down and help you go up and down the hills. So you just push the end of that button. It'll tell you on the dash that it's been engaged and you can just let it do its work. The radio runs off of the house battery. So not the car battery like in your vehicle. What that means for you is when you take the key out of the ignition, the radio will stay on. So what you wanna do is power that down when you get out or it'll continue to burn the house batteries. The power button is the volume knob. You just hold that down. We do include a radio manual in the guide that's provided with the RV. So if you have any other questions about the radio, you'll have that to refer to. This vehicle has two TVs. The main TV is up here in the over cab area. There is a little knob that keeps it tight that you can undo and then the TV will swing out. Up top here, is where you're gonna have your DVD player and the remotes for both TVs and the DVD. Both TVs are connected to that DVD player. There is an antenna on the roof, so if you're in the city or somewhere where you would get antenna stations, you can get a little bit of TV there. Otherwise, your campsite may have cable option where Nathan showed us on the outside, you can plug in your cable cord. Up top here is a sleeping area. So this piece pulls down the buckles for the ladder are always in the front and it just pushes down in here. The ladder is actually stored in the back closet. So we'll show that when we go to the back bedroom. You do also have a privacy curtain up here. It's Velcro and there's Velcro attachments throughout the cab so that you can hang that curtain for privacy. The sofa is also a sleeping area. It just lays down flat like a futon. So you pull up on the bottom and the whole thing will open and lay flat. And then to put it back up, you pull up and pull the back and it sets back in. It does have seat belts across there. Those can fall down when the bed's made. So you just have to get back in and pull the seat belts back out. Across the way here is the dinette table. It can also turn into a sleeping area. So underneath is the latch. You release that and the table pushes down. It's usually best to push it from the middle. These cushions come up and it goes all the way down till it's resting on the ledge. And then the back cushions push in to make it a full sleeping area. Some of the vehicles are equipped with this feature of a wireless charger. You just set the phone on there and it charges. There is a USB in there also. If yours doesn't have that, don't worry because we also always have extra USB charging. So look in and around the bed area up front here and you can charge on the battery versus charging in an actual, plugging in an actual charger to the outlet. Over here on the lights, the ones that have the button on the bottom, you push the button to turn them on and off. And then another great feature is this power strip. The silver, you push it in and you can pull it up and there's extra outlets and more USB charging on there for you. To put it back down, you just push the red button and it pops back in. A lot of the light switches are gonna be up and underneath the cabinetry. So any of these rocker switches that don't have any labels on them are usually for lights. One of the ones in the kitchen area is gonna be for the kitchen fan. It does have a power switch on the fan itself that also has to be on. So the switch has to be on and the power on the fan has to be on. For your cooking, microwave, stove top, and an oven in this one. All of this is gas, so this will use the propane. This is not a cooktop, so it needs to come up while you're cooking. 
to light the burners, you're gonna hold it on the flame and then this is the spark. And you can see that it sparked and then you can adjust it to whatever level you need for the burner. And then same with the oven, you hold it on the flame, spark. Sometimes the oven takes a couple attempts uh, before it lights, but then the oven should turn on for you and you can adjust the temperature. The microwave needs 110 power. So if you're using it and you're plugged in at the campsite, no problem, it'll work. If you aren't plugged in, you need to have the generator running to use the microwave. On the edge of the counter here, there is a counter extension. You pull it up and it latches into place. To put it back down, you have to push in on both the latches and it'll fold back down. Across is the refrigerator freezer. To open, you pull the handles. The handles can be a little sensitive, so don't pull too hard. But you have refrigerator and a separate freezer. The controls for them are up top here. We'll have this on when you come to pick up your vehicle. On is this button here, and it's always in the auto mode. Auto means that the fridge will shift between electricity and propane. So when you unplug at the campsite, uh, it will switch back to propane, or when you plug it in, it'll switch to electric. The only time that you need to do anything with the fridge is if that check light comes on, that means something happened that it didn't like. And so you turn it off, wait about five seconds, turn it back on, and you should be good to go. Underneath the foot of the bed is the breaker and fuse panel. If you're having issues, refer to the guide and you can check those breakers and fuses. Back here, the bed's folded up because we had put the slide out. So once you have that slide out, the bed comes out and you have your king size bed. Just don't forget when you go to put the slide back in that we need to fold this back up first so that it can fit. In this back wardrobe, the ladder for the front bunk is in there. So it's strapped to the wall. You can take that out when you're parked, set your bed up front. And then on the wall, across from the bed is the thermostat. It's pretty straightforward. You can do cool, fan, off, and heat. As a reminder, the air conditioner does need 110 to operate. So that's either the generator or you're plugged into shore power. And then the fan functions we typically leave on auto. And then you have a slider for your temperature control. This is the air conditioner unit on the ceiling of the living area. If you have the vents on the sides open, all of that air is going to be coming out pretty hard right here. If you want to force it out the other roof vents, close those and then you can adjust your roof vents and they can close, open, spin. This is your full bath. You have sink, shower and toilet. There is a foot flush on the toilet. Uh, there's a fan in the bathroom, same as the kitchen where the wall switch has to be on and the switch up top needs to be on. The bathroom is also where the GFCI outlet is located. So if you are having an issue and have tripped any of the outlets and it seems like your outlets aren't working with the generator or when you're plugged in, come in here and you reset that just like you do at your house. And that concludes the tour for the Thor Chateau 27R. Thanks for stopping by. We look forward to seeing you soon.